Hello and welcome to Sports Hub. Thank you so much for joining us on this 30th day of May 2022, which is my birthday. I'm so happy today and I'm so happy that you found time to join, uh, to join us. My name is Modern Sinkala, also called Ntapechera. Right, I would be so happy if you can call me on this day, on my birthday, so the numbers will be crawling on the screen. Uh, last week I featured a volleyballer and a basketballer. Today I'm featuring a footballer who has seen it all in football. He has played for the national team and he has also played for so many clubs, home and abroad. So make sure you stay with us. Feel free to participate on the program by calling 0211 253. You can also send us a WhatsApp message on 0955 Well, if you're into social media, Facebook is there. There is a, a Sports Hub Facebook page and also Modern Sinkala Sports. So on how much you know your sports men and women segment, last week you remember I asked you to tell me at least two Zambian players who did not test action at the 2012 AFCON tournament. Two Zambian players who did not test uh, action at the 2012 AFCON tournament. So let's see the responses. We have, um, yes, yeah, so that's the question that I asked you. So let's see who attempted to answer. I know um, there are some people who... So uh, this one says, Karidilo Kakonje and Clifford Mulenga were those who did not feature in any game. This is, uh, he says, I am Noah Chirua from Lundazi. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see some more. Are there some more? Um, which players did not feature? At least give me two players who did not feature uh, in that AFCON 2012 where Zambia won. That's uh, 10 years ago. So um, I know there's also a response from, um, from a gift Muamba from Isoka who says uh, players who never tested action at 2012 AFCON, Kariliro Kakonje and Joshua Titima. So gift Muamba is very correct. Yes, Kariliro Kakonje who was uh, the second choice goalkeeper and also Joshua Titima, third choice goalkeeper, did not uh, play. Uh, but Clifford, uh, unfortunately, Chiro, you are wrong. He played in the game uh, between Zambia and Equatorial Guinea in Malabo. So, uh, unfortunately, you didn't get that one right. But uh, Kalidilo, yes, you are right. Then Ivan Skangwa did not also play. So that's a message from uh, uh, Gift Mwamba of Isoka, who says Kalidilo Kakonje and Joshua Titima. So well done, Gift. You are doing very well. Last week you also got it right. So I have another question for you today. I want you to tell me who the top scorer was at AFCON 2012 and how many goals he scored. Who was the top scorer at the 2012 AFCON and how many goals did he score? You can call me on 0211 25 30 25 or 0211 25 08 43. Yes, so that's uh, the question that we are dealing with today uh, on WhatsApp. It's 0955 20 on Facebook, Sports Hub Facebook page, um, which is, uh, yeah, Sports Hub Facebook page and also Modern Sinkala Sports. So I'll be waiting to hear from you. The phone lines are open. Make sure you call just now before we go far. So let's look at what happened over the weekend in terms of netball. Uh, we had uh, week seven of the Midlands Netball Association League. Uh, Premier League games, uh, the games were played at Napsa Sports Complex in Lusaka. Uh, so it was Nkwazi 40, Mazabuka Neo. This was a walkover result because Mazabuka United failed to travel. Lusaka City Council 34, Red Arrows 33. Then Green Eagles Neo, Green Buffaloes 40. This was a walkover result. I'm wondering what happened to Green Eagles because they have all the machinery sponsored by the Zambia National Service. I wonder why they failed to travel. Sport in action, 18, Prison Leopard, 61. Unza, 16, Napsa, 64. In the men's league, round six games, it was in quasi 40, Mazabuka United, nil. So Mazabuka United in the men's category also failed to travel. Unza, 40, Sun Power, nil. It was also another walkover result. Green Buffaloes, 29. ZNS McKenney, 30. This was the battle of the Greens. Okay, from netball, we go to football in the first national women's league. Playoff final, which was played on Saturday 
at Sunset Stadium. It was uh, the battle between Green Buffaloes and Yasa, who were the winners of uh, their various zones. So it was new, new in regulation time. But uh, when it came to penalties, Green Buffaloes beat Yasa by three goals to two. So congratulations to Green Buffaloes. Let's go to the first provincial division one games. So we have the winners now uh, from uh, Division 1. Um, so from Northern Province, we have Mpulungu Haba, who will be coming for the playoffs. Uh, the playoffs will be held from 9th to 13th June 2022. So Northern Province is Mpulungu Haba. Eastern Province, Katete Rangers. Muchinga Province, Riona Konde. Kumuitu Kwilanzi, welcome. I uh, hope, <laughs> hope this time you managed to go to Eden University National Division 1 League. Uh, the past two seasons you failed to, uh, to qualify to pull through from the playoffs. Then Copper Belt, we have Mutondo Stars. Lusaka, we have Riflemen. Western, Zesco Shockers. Southern, Blue Eagles. They are from Livingston Central. We have Aguila Stars. This is the team coached by Makundika Sakala. Northwestern Province, Zesco Solwezi. Luapula. Zesco, Luapola. So you can see that the Zesco teams are doing well. We have three Zesco teams here. Zesco Shokas, Zesco Solwezi, and Zesco Luapula. So congratulations to all the teams that are coming for the playoffs. Let's now go to the CAF Champions League. The final is on tonight as I'm talking right now. It has kicked off. It kicked off at 21 hours. We'll see who will be the winners between our Ahli of Egypt, coached by Pizzo Mosimane, and with that, Casablanca of Morocco, it's a very tough final. From here, I'll be going to watch uh, this final. It's a very tight one. Then uh, we witnessed the final of the UEFA Champions League between Liverpool and Real Madrid. Mm, looks like Real Madrid, unstoppable. So they won their 14th title after beating Liverpool by a goal to nil. So that's what happened over the weekend. So before I introduce my guest in the studio, let's dedicate a song done by 1J, uh, which is Vuvuzela. I'm dedicating this song to the Chipolo Polo. As you may be aware, they are playing Ivory Coast this Friday, 21 hours. And as ZNBC, we are scheduled to show this match, which will be live on TV1 at 21 hours. But we'll start with the build-up at 20 hours. So the song is Vuvuzela by 1J.
Dedication to the Chipolo Polo taking on Ivory Coast this Friday. We are running behind you. All the best, boys. You did it in 2012. So you can do it even now, even if it's in their backyard. So time for me now to welcome my guest in the studio. He is one of the most traveled footballer in terms of clubs. Born on 5th August 1987 in Kabompo, Zambia. He has played for Chiparamba Great Eagles in Zambia, University of Pretoria in South Africa, Ogright, IS of Sweden, Bidvest Vitz, Tanda Royal Zulu, Mpumalanga Black Aces, Bloomfontein Celtic, Supersport United, back to Mpumalanga Black Aces again in South Africa, <laughs> Ajax Cape Town, Zesco United in Zambia, Morocco Swallows, Mbombela United, Jomo Cosmos, Forest Rangers now in Zambia. I'm talking about uh, Clifford Mulenga. Also at national team level he's played for under 17, he's played for under 20 and also for the senior national football team. And under 23 as well. And under 23 as well. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what an illustrious <laughs> career. Welcome to Sports Hub Clifford. No, thank you very much for having me. Okay. Before we get in for the ha happy birthday to you. Oh, so this is wow. from, <laughs> from Forest Strangers. Wow, I feel like crying. <laughs> wow. brother, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. This is what you get for being born. <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm moving to Ndola now. <laughs> all right. Now, Clifford, uh, we have to start from where it all started. Uh, tell us about your brief background, where you were born from. Um, I, I already mentioned you were born in 1987, but how your, your early childhood was? Um, I was actually yeah, born in Kabompo, um, very far from Lusaka, because that's where my, my parents were working at that time. Yes, and then from there we moved to Nkumbi province, and then from Nkumbi we moved to Lusaka. And uh, Lusaka, that's where uh, I think everything just started. Okay, yes. all right. Um, at what point did you think you can play football? Um, I think it was in 1994, if I remember very well. Um, we had been watching the Africa Cup of Nations, and uh, Zambia had just lost to, to Nigeria in the final of that tournament. And I was uh, standing next to my dad, and I think he looked very sad. And um, I asked him why he was so sad. And he was like, um, you know, Zambia has just been beaten by Nigeria in the final, so... I feel sad, you know. But at that point, I didn't understand what he meant. So I just kind of said to him, don't worry. Um, one day when I'm older, I will win you the Africa Cup of Nations. You know, so I think from that time, that's where the, the love for football just started. I think after that, uh, AFCON 94, I also wanted to be a footballer. Because after that, as I you know, my father really said to tell me a lot about, you know, the great players of Zambian football. Because my dad is a, is a big football fanatic. And so he knows the history of Zambian football very well. So... Even today, when we sit down and we talk about the history of football, like he really educates me. And uh, we actually come from a country with very, very great uh, footballers. We're actually blessed with just the football talent itself. Great, great. Is there a particular footballer um, uh, who inspired you? Um, yes. Um, Raul Gonzalez from Real Madrid. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I think from a young age, I said watching Real Madrid. I said watch him, you know, his left footed just like me. And uh, when I was growing up, uh, I wanted to be like Raul. Even when I played for Chiparamba Great Eagles, um, all my teammates called me Raul. Even today, some people still call me by Raul. Because hey. everything I did was I wanted it to be special and classic, just like Raul did. And so uh, that, that's the man that actually really, really inspired me. That's why I'm such a huge Real Madrid fan even up to today. Lovely. Yes. Okay. So the first academy you joined was Chiparamba Great Eagles? Uh, it was actually uh, Kimako. That was okay. based in Akaunda Square, where uh, Linus Chalwe, uh, Sasi Chalwe, so the, the, Ch- the Chalwe brothers actually played there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I played in the under, under eight that time. And um, my, my older brothers played for their senior team. So, so you started at the age of eight? Yes. I started wow. in that. I was very, very young when I started there. And okay. then uh, from there, that's when Chiparamba came onto the scene. I think when Nenani came to Zambia, he created uh, a Chiparamba Great Eagles. And uh, that's when, from there, a few years, I moved to Chimamba Great Eagles. We have been coached by uh, Coach Albert Mpande. I'm sure, oh, I'm sure okay. you know him. <laughs> yes, so, Coach Fega. Yeah, Coach Fega, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and okay. Coach, uh, Coach Robin Munsaka, Coach Noah Piri was there as well. And uh, I think from there, that's where my love for football really, really started. Because uh, we had Nenani Banda there. Uh, I think he's the man that pioneered a lot of our careers because he was very, very passionate and enthusiastic about football. You know, So he really encouraged us to just... Like he did everything he could, you know, that's uh, the time when we even said going to our trips in Sweden, you know, where everybody got, got, got seen, you know. Um, uh, from there, Dominic Yobe and Davison Kaus even ended up going to Manchester United uh, for, for trials there, you know. Okay. Even today, I don't know how many years later, Davison Kaus still talks about him meeting Beckham. So I think it was a good thing for, for everybody, uh, everyone of us that passed through uh, Chiparamba Great Eagles. And also um, the late president, Mr. Rupia Banda, he was a... Uh, chairman at uh, Chiparamba Great Eagles. So I think uh, playing for Chiparamba really opened up a lot of our eyes and it made us want to play football, you know? Because if you can just see the way the history of football from Chiparamba has been, uh, the guys that won AFCON 2012, you know, from Hichani Monde, Davis Kausu, you know, we had a lot of great players at personal club, you know, Fayo Tembo, William Munjovu, uh, you know, just uh, Mwape Mwelwa, Mwendo mm. Sakala, Given Singuluma, Wow, Boyd Miller. I mean, if I can just name these guys, I mean, you know, it, it really brings back a lot of beautiful memories. And I'm grateful that, you know, Chiparamba did come through. And uh, hopefully we can continue to, you know, to invest in such kind of academies. Okay. So you were first spotted um, as, as a, an under-17 player. You were spotted from Chiparamba? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think oh, mm. the Chiparamba players, we were the ones that actually did not play professional league football here in Zambia, that actually played for the under-17s. And uh, oh, I think Rainford as well also came from Afri Sport. Mm. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically our under-17 national team under Smarter Smarter and their yeah, coach Kashimoto, I think the bulk of the players in that team were actually from Chiparam. I think we were about eight of us in that team. That under-17 by, coached by Smarter Smarter is highly talked about even now. Very dangerous team that one. Because <laughs> I think from, from that under-17 national team, uh, a lot of us went on to play for the senior national team. Because from that under-17, we moved on to the under-20s and we went and won the Kwasafa tournament. Uh, then we uh, also qualified for, you know, uh, the World Cup and the Africa Cup with, you know, yeah, Emmanuel Mayukas and them. And then we also moved on to the under-23s. We also won this on five games in Mozambique with that same team. And from there, we got promoted to the national team mm. until we went and won uh, AFCON 2012. Talking about under 20, you remember yes. those photos? <laughs> <laughs> I was a bad man this time. <laughs> and you look quite young there. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that was the game against Nigeria. Yes. Was it yes. at the African Championship or World Cup? The World Cup in Canada. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. yes and yeah. is this the game when you were eliminated by Nigeria? Yes. In, yeah, it was so very, it was very, very painful because mm. we had done very well. We had beaten a. Uh, uh, Luis Suarez is a Uruguay team yes. with, uh, with Cavani in the team. Gary Talking Medell, about that, you know? I think we have some highlights. And you scored the first goal. Uh, you scored the first goal. You scored the penalty. Yes. Yeah, with the left foot. You slotted it in nicely. If we can just see those highlights. So, um, h- how can you describe the experience? At Let's start with the African Championship first yes. before going to the World Cup. Uh, the Africa uh, Championship, I think, was was one we should have actually won because uh, we did very well from all the group stages, you know. And, uh, you know, that time we had uh, we had a very, very good team. Mm. We had a very good team, you know. If you look at our lineup, you know, 
or uh, Nyambe Mlenga, Roger Kola in that team, Stopira Sunzu, William Njovu. That's for your tembo as well? Men for your tembo was in there. Manu Mayuka was in that team as well. It was, it was just an amazing team, you know, to have. And we, we beat everyone until we met the, the hosts, which were Congo. And I remember we were losing 1-0 and I actually got sent off in that game. And we, what we, happened? <laughs> we went on a very nice counter attack, you know, and I dribbled my way through and I was, as, 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 as I was going towards the goal, I got tackled by one of the defenders and in frustration, I actually punched the guy. <laughs> so that oh, was the highlight wow. for the Under-20 <laughs> World Cup in Canada. And um, yes, I think that was a penalty. Was that you? Yes, that, that was a that, that was a Mayuka. Was that oh, Mayuka? that was Mayuka who created that Mayuka penalty. I think Mayuka created the penalty, yes. Mayuka and uh, the penalty. there was a red card there. And can you imagine in that uh, Uruguay side? Oh, sentence? yeah, <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely slotted it. Yeah. Left foot, you picked a spot, yes. and you slotted it in. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> nice one. I'm sure it brings in a lot of good memories. Yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, we had so, a week. So one would ask, really you played with the likes of... Um, uh, Suarez was Cavani there as well. Yes, Cavani was Even in the team Cavani. as well. Yes, but people ask that. Look at where Suarez is, Cavani. But what has happened to you, Zambians? You even beat them by two goals to nil. Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, I I will speak on my my, on my for myself. All right. Uh, for yes. me, I think it was just about um, uh, proper guidance. You know, I think uh, after this tournament, I I got a lot of offers from a lot of good teams, but uh, you know, we, we became stars before we actually became stars, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we, I stopped listening a little bit because I thought I could just fit into any team, you know. But you know, the culture of European football and African football is very different. Because mm -hmm. in African, in European football, for example, like the teams that wanted us, like you know, your, your Real Madrid, your Arsenal's and those guys, mm -hmm. they don't just look at the talent of the player. They also look at your personality as well, you know how you are raised and how you respect other people. So those kind of things are some of the things that we, we don't get taught, uh, I think, uh, in, in, in some African teams, you know. So we're not taught uh, humility, you understand. So you might be a good player, you might have all the talent, but if you don't have a good personality, you don't have the humility to be around other people, to, to, to humble yourself and fit into a group, mm. then you're going to have a problem. They're not going to sign you, whatever happens. Mm. So I think that's where some of us lost it, actually. Wow. Wow. And a lot of good players, all those you mentioned, Mayuka and all that. And um, come to think of it, no one plays for any big club. Okay, Mayuka tried, played for Southampton a bit, then came back. Um, well, maybe like you said. So now we have um, another, another group which went to the World Cup. Patson Daka, Enoch Mwepu, Fashion Sakala. And they are playing in England. What would be your, your advice to them? Um, look, I think they're already doing very well, as we can all see. I think you can see that the boys are, are humble. I think they have adapted what they left in Europe because they've been in Europe for a long time, you know. So they're definitely doing something that we were not doing that time, you know. I think you know you need to you need to take good care of yourself because a lot of people will talk about discipline, but uh, they actually don't understand what is discipline. Discipline is a lot of things. Discipline is not just not drinking beer as a footballer. It's a lot of things. It's, you know, you, what, what do you drink? What do you eat? You know, how do you sleep? Where do you sleep? Who do you hang out with? And those, those kind of things, they all add to, to what discipline is. So I think before people talk about discipline, we need to understand discipline itself. So I think these boys have come to understand what discipline is and they're applying the, the rules of discipline. I think that's why they are, they, are, they, are, they are where they are right now. So the only advice I would give them is, you know, just keep doing what you're doing and uh, you know, the sky, the sky is never the limit. You know, you can, they can go as far as they want to go. And it, it would be lovely to see one of our Zambian players in one of these teams that's going to win the Champions League or something like that, you understand? So for them, I think it's just, you know, to encourage them a lot. Because okay. I've also seen there's also these boys in uh, these uh, Kingsley is doing yes. very well in Russia. Mm. Uh, Ivan Skangwa is too in is Russia. That, he's actually now going to Serbia. Exactly. Mm. So which, which, which shows that he's, he's improving, you know? So... Yes, yeah, so I think uh, it's all about you know understanding discipline, and also you need to know what works for you. I think some players don't understand what works for you. You know, some people it's peer pressure. Okay. Your friends want to have a beer. You think because you don't want to disappoint them, you also have the beer, but you shouldn't be having the beer. You know, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I know people are going to laugh at this, but <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you know, stick to one girl. 
<laughs> stick to one girl. You know, because, you know, uh, from experience, you know, uh, I'm sure my dad is listening, he's probably laughing right now. Look, <laughs> a lot of women, they will finish your energy. It's not, it's not just your money that they finish. They finish your energy. energy. Well. Your energy goes because you, you have to work now extra now to, you know, to, be work, to be all over the place. You know, so I think uh, people really need to choose, choose your battles wisely. Some of us, we, we burnt a lot of bridges because we didn't know how to choose our battles, mm. you know. So I'm very happy with the way the, the boys that have come up now are doing things. You know, they, you can see they don't, they don't really interact with a lot of people. They keep to themselves, and which, which is very, very important as well, mm. you know. And as a footballer, it's very important to say no to people, you know. People call you at 22 hours to say they're coming over to your place for a beer or they, someone wants to come there with girls. Mm. Have the guts to say, no, my friend, I'm resting now. I've got work tomorrow. It won't kill you. It's only going to help you in, in future, you know. So I think, yeah, we need to really encourage these guys to be disciplined so we can see more players playing for, for the top teams. It, it makes our, our national team stronger as well. Right. Yes. Right. So let's look at uh, national team experience now. I know, I remember you were caught when you were very young. You were 17. Uh, Renford was 18. Kalusha Kod, the two of you, you were the youngest in the team. How was your experience joining the, the national team at that time? Um, it was a bit scary, to be honest. It was a bit scary. Um, I remember, you know, our first training session, you get to the bus. You don't know whether to get onto the bus or to wait until everybody's on the bus because, you know, you've got, you know, the big boys there. You know, there was Milanzi there. You know, the Ian Bakalas are there. You know, you know, so, and these are the guys that you've grown up admiring and wanting to be like, you know. Oh, you, you found Ian Bakala there and he's now your coach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. my brother. Wow. <laughs> yes, and you know, you find your Elijah Tanners that didn't really smile at anyone. It was just always so, you know, and he would tell you, like, you know, he's one of those guys that would just tell you, Mwaiche, take on your fist, you understand? <laughs> so it was a bit intimidating, you know, but as, you know, but what I liked about the whole experience was that those guys were not afraid to encourage you to be a better player, okay. you know? Like, um, I remember I was, sh I was sharing a position with uh, Numba, Numba Numamba, you mm -hmm. know? Like, he would actually want you to take over from him. So they would mentor you. They would mm -hmm. encourage you where to improve. And when you go there as a youngster, they expect you to outwork them. They want you to show that you're hungry. And when you did that, they gave you respect. They welcomed you because they knew you were going to help the team. Mm -hmm. They knew you were there to help. So it was, it was a very good experience. And we can only be grateful to, you know, to Kalusha Wale because I think the time that he became the coach, that's when a lot of young players started getting the recognition. Like, mm -hmm. he was not afraid to, to play a youngster, mm -hmm. you know. And, and from that, that, that uh, thing of him encouraging everyone to compete for a position, I think is what built that unity in the team. Because even the older players now, started respecting us because they could see what we did on the pitch. Mm. You know, they knew it was now one team. They knew that there was something special that is going to happen. And that's where the build-up for the 2012 uh, Afghan Triumph, I think, uh, started from. Mm. Yeah. So you've, you played for three Afghans, isn't it? 2006, Six. 2010, and 2012? 2008. Oh, and yeah. 2008. Yes, uh, Egypt 2006, Ghana 2008, Angola 2010, and then Equatorial Guinea and Gabon in 2012. And you went for these Afghans? Yes. Well, wow. what has been your, your strength? What's your style of play? Um, aggressive. I like, to, I like to take on defenders. I like to, to shoot at goal. I like to create goals. So I'm more of a going forward kind of player. You know, I like when I get the ball, I turn around, I'm facing this way. We're going to score. We need to create something. So it's more aggressive. It's more creative. That kind of, that kind of football. Okay. So I know you've, also, you've scored four goals for the national team. Okay, so you, you, you are not like um, a natural center forward, you are, you are a winger. So you come from the wings, so even if you score goals, you come from wings. Um, Is that your comfortable position? <sighs> when, I, when I played for, for Chiparamba and uh, you know, when I started there, I was more of a coming in winger. That's why I scored a lot of goals. But at the national team, we had the system, which was a 4 4 2 system. Okay. So there I was encouraged to be a, just an outright winger. Okay. So my job was just to go to the wings and bringing the crosses, okay. you know, yeah. Even Besuma scored a lot of goals from my crosses. It's too yeah. close me to dance says, <laughs> Mwaiche inshallah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, so, so I think it was, it was good. I just, I enjoyed, I enjoyed what I used to do on the wings, you know, because I still had a lot of speed that time. So just dribble a defender, go down the line and whip in the crosses. Okay. Yes. But which, which, which position have you ever enjoyed playing? 
Uh, Center forward or as a wing? As a number 10. Okay. Yes, behind the, behind the main striker. I have played as a center forward before, but I preferred playing behind the main striker because it allows me to either drop deep or go wide and then just do what I have to do. Okay. And you can see at Forest Rangers, like uh, this season, I've, I've excelled in that number 10 position because it has given me a lot of room. Because when I'm playing in that position, I think um, I, have, I have a lot of time, lot of time to think on the ball so it, it becomes easier to, to score goals okay yes. uh, give us experiences of playing at the africa cup of nations starting from 2006 up to 2012 like you describe each edition and how it was for you uh from the 2006 i think you know it was just uh, it was it's uh, it opened our eyes how beautiful it is to actually play for the national team because you know we got there we had all the big stars of that time in our national team you know and then uh I remember chamanga scoring against Tunisia. Yes, yes, but yes. But you yes. couldn't hold on. They came back and scored <laughs> <got> four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a miserable tournament, but I think it was a learning curve because uh, Kalu had just come in as the coach, and I think it was, we were beginning to rebuild the team as well. So it was, a, it was a good experience, you know, to have played against those uh, big uh, West African stars of that time, you know. It was, it, was, it was very intimidating, and you know Egyptians watch football, so the stadiums were always full, and you could see, you know, the supporters trying to intimidate you and stuff like that. But, you know, we, we held on as a team and uh, at least we managed to win one game in our group against South Africa. So it was, it was uh, not the best tournament, but, uh, yeah, it, it was, we, were, we were growing, you know. Then we moved on to Ghana 2008 mm -hmm. uh, with Coach Patrick Peary. That also ended in tears. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Remember Kennedy yeah. Ketani, oh, Billy Mwanza, we yes, part of that. Yes, yes, and we got that hammered by, by Cameroon. <laughs> Cameroon and, wow. by one. <laughs> that was just was something else, you know. But um, I think at that time also we had a lot of players that were actually past their peak and were phasing out of the national team, you know. Uh, because we remember after that tournament, uh, 2010, uh, in Angola, Rena came through. That's when now the, the, the build-up had almost been complete. Rena came in, he re organized us properly. We even reached the quarterfinals that yes. tournament. We lost to is it Nigeria. Nigeria. Yes, on and then, yes, on penalties, you know. Mm -hmm. And when we came back to Zambia, uh, we received a lot of praise. Uh, I remember the president, Mr. Rupia, little president, Mr. Rupia Banda, even gave us some extra incentives just for the good performance, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they told us, you know, if you keep on going like this, 2012 could be ours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kept going, we kept believing. 2012, it ended in in beers <laughs> <laughs> it ended in it ended in joy we won the tournament some of the pictures. Uh, hope you remember yes. uh, what happened if you can see one of the 2012 photos um, it was it was quite interesting um, do you remember that I was actually not here this time you were I had, I had just left the tournament no you were was I Let's here see another photo maybe I can was see I? you are behind was you are the mohawk Oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, the show another photo where he's clear. No man, I kick myself. Where he's clear? <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. I'm wearing, right. wearing right. jersey number eighteen. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> 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 I think uh, who are you trying to throw in the water? Because you know we were teasing each other that uh, uh -huh. people, people that use juju don't like sea water. So. <laughs> So people didn't want to jump into the into the water. And so we tried to throw some guys in the water there. <laughs> and, yeah. and you know, uh -huh. aha. Yeah. And uh, you are trying to to to, to take uh, team uh, team manager, manager yes. to Sekelo Kamwambi. Yes. And you were saying there's another photo where I was saying, oh, my phone to Alamo Mesh, Ning what I'm a passport here. Yeah, I won't. Yeah, I won't. But then you man, uh, you were there. I think yeah. that was in Besuma as well. Yes. Mr. Fakatongo was in the forefront dragging. Yeah. You can but just see Mbesuma from his head there. You can't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> you can and never miss that head. <laughs> that one without uh, without the top, that's uh, Tim Fizio. Oh, uh, uh, Chaloba. Chaloba, yes. yes. yes Chaloba. <laughs> <laughs> Photos get us yeah. of uh, myself. Yeah. I think th th uh, this team, uh, the good thing about it, you know, we, uh, we had Hevrena. Hevrena mm -hmm. wanted everyone to be involved. Mm -hmm. Whatever activities we did, he wanted us to, he wanted everyone to be involved. Even when we just... Uh, like maybe went for a, for a team walk after that we would come as a, would come as a group would make a circle and would sing and everyone the kit manager everyone would have to go in the middle and and, and dance to, to whatever songs we were playing there you know and we had the uh mayuka mayuka was always the, the, the crazy one and chindu kampamba <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you remember that yeah so <laughs> it, was, it was always fun and it was just it was, it was one team it was really really one team and i think 
um, we believed more in ourselves than anyone else did, and it was just it was just great. You know, we had a great great bunch of of, of guys at that time. Because uh, now we even have a 2012 African winning uh, WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. Everyone, oh, okay. yeah, everyone is on that group. And are you there as well? Yes, I am. <laughs> I was part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> so so okay. we, still, yeah, we, we still interact with the guys, you know, we, we remind each other of, um, of, of, of everything that happened from way back, from when we started as, as a team mm -hmm. until 2012, you know, and it, what everybody's doing today and, you know, but uh, Chintu likes to bully me though. Whenever I say something funny, he says, your time is up, you're going to leave again. <laughs> But so it's always fun. So those photos we are seeing, uh, so it was on the shores of Atlantic Ocean. Yes. It was a day after you played Libya. When you drew 2-2, two, two, you played in a waterlogged pitch, uh -huh. and then you trained from there. So I thought maybe Rena wanted to make you acclimatize to the waters and all that. Maybe Was that the reason? No, no. I think he just wanted us to go and, you know, just to relax and just freshen up, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, because Rena really believed in, in, in togetherness, you know. So he knew that the result was not what we wanted to get. So he wanted to just break the tension, take the guys to the, to the water, just to have some fun and just relax like that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So there's another photo. Um, I captured you. Actually, in the morning, after, after you beat Equatorial Guinea one new, now the following day when we were trying to go back to Bata from mm -hmm. Malabo, that's when I captured. And you looked like worried. Uh, for us, we didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know what was happening. I hope the director can show us that photo. <laughs> <laughs> I looked worried. You looked worried. And so I was saying, what is happening? And uh, I, I captured that photo. So, um, what really happened that day? Wow, which, uh, which day? Okay, okay. <laughs> let's start from uh, the game against Equatorial Guinea. I know that was the first match you featured yes. uh, in the tournament. How was it for you? Uh, it, it was a very good, uh, good match. It was, it, was, it was tense, as you could see, because we had uh, one new lead, and we knew we had to win to get to the next round. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but we believed that we could beat, uh, beat the Equatorial Guinea, and we did. And it was just it was, it was amazing. And to have come on and, you know, played a few minutes, I think it was also very, very good. And... Um, I remember you came in as a substitute yes. in that match. Yes, I came as a second half substitute. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, right. So you won one nil, and uh, when we were going back the following day, that's when we were told, no, actually Clifford is going back. What has happened? No, we told, uh, broke curfew rules. Were you a bad influence on the team? No, I was like the youngest player in the team. I could never have been the by, uh, bad influence, you know? Yeah. Yes, I think, um, look, it's just one of those moments where... Uh, uh, I did what I wasn't supposed to do and got punished for it. So, I th but now it's water under the bridge because after that, you know, we, the team went on to win the tournament. I spoke to Rena, I spoke to some of the guys in the team and I think everything got resolved and yeah, we have all just moved on now and everyone is, I, I hope everyone is happy as I am because I'm very happy. Okay. Yes. Is that the photo? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the photo. <laughs> And I, I don't know what you are oh. trying, you and Hichan, what you are trying to discuss. Ah, but boy, uh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad, do oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> <Come in Bombo. laughs> yeah, that's, that's my brother. That's my brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah so this was at the airport uh, mm. uh, in Malabo um, mm -hmm. before we, we, we actually, actually we went back together uh, yes. uh, mm. in Malabo and mm -hmm. then you you found uh, another flight to come back to Zambia. Yes. I'm sure that should have been very devastating for you. What lessons did you learn? Um, I won't call it devastating. Uh, it, was more, it was more disappointing. I think uh, after uh, the issues that had taken place that I don't think I want to talk about anymore because I think we've, we've spoken about this for a very long time. But it was just... Uh, I did have a bit of, uh, some, a bit of regrets. Um, um, it was not a very good moment for me because I know my, my, my parents were heartbroken, you know. Uh, my parents were really heartbroken about it and it was also a bit, it was, it was quite embarrassing as well, you know. So it was not a very good moment but it happened and, uh, you know, these things happen, you learn from them and I just, you know, hope that it doesn't ever happen to, to anyone else because, not only because the team went on to win, you know, because whichever way it happened, whether the team had won or lost, it would have still been a, a very, very bad thing, you know. So I just hope it does ne never happens to any other footballer, you know. So I think people should just, you know, when you're in camp, be in camp, you know. Because camp does come to an end, and when you leave camp, you can go and do whatever you need to do. So camp should be respected, and people should, you know, follow the rules and just 
behave themselves. Okay. So the line, are, uh, the lines are crawling on your screen. You can call us. I asked you a question. Uh, which question did I ask you? I asked you who was the top scorer at the 2012 Afcon, and how many goals did uh, that player score? We'll be waiting to hear from you, and shortly we'll be. Yes, that's the question. Tell me who was the top scorer? Who was the top scorer uh, at the 2012 Afcon, and how many goals did he score? Uh, shortly, we'll be joined by Forest Rangers um, media officer Christina Zulu. So that's um, uh, international football. And that was the last time ever you played for the national team. Let's talk about club football now. Uh, how has been your experience? You've played for 13 clubs. <laughs> 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 mm, the most wow. traveled. <laughs> what wow. has been happening? How is your experience with clubs? Um, okay, so wow. we have a uh, gift <laughs> Mwamba. I'm um, sure from Isoka, Gift. Good evening and welcome to Sports Hub. Good evening, thank you so much. How are you, uh, Mr. Sinkala? Very well, thanks. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And uh, the last two weeks you've been getting it right. Are you going to get it right today? Uh, I'm confident. Okay, yes, tell us. Yes, uh, the, 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 the golden boot winner was uh, Emmanuel Mayuka. Okay. And uh, he scored the three goals. Okay. Um, yes, uh, I'm sure there was a tie between him and uh, the captain, Kito Pakatonga, and some other guys from uh, other teams like uh, Obama. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But uh, it was given to him, Emmanuel Mayuka. <laughs> Gift Mwamba, haven't you just Googled? <laughs> No, no, actually, um, I was watching that tournament and, you know, uh, Zambian football has been my passion. <laughs> okay, great, great. Now, Gift, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming through. Let's hear from others as well. Uh, thank you, who thank was you. the top scorer at the 2012 AFCON and how many goals? So, Gift Mwamba says, Emmanuel Mayuka, three goals tied with Christopher Katongo. Okay, yes, you are about to start talking about club football. Yeah, okay. Um... Well, it was just a, it was a long journey. Um, I don't think I managed to stay for more than two seasons in one club. You know, uh, I think it's because you know in my younger days I, I got frustrated really really fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. yes. Like when something wasn't going my way, I always chose to leave. Mm. You know. Yes. So that's what led to to me changing clubs so many times. You know. But um, uh, one club where I, I stayed for a while was uh, Bluefontein Celtics, and I think I really, you know, enjoyed myself. I think that's one of the clubs where I really, really enjoyed myself there. And uh, yeah, but in terms of changing clubs, it was all about frustration and always wanting to play and play. And when it wasn't working, I just wanted to to shift. Okay, uh, some people said no. Uh, Clifford has been going from one club to uh, to another, maybe because he's a bad boy and all that. Is it true? You know, this whole bad boy thing, I've actually never understood what they actually mean by it. <laughs> I've heard that I'm a bad boy, but I actually don't know what, because no one has actually ever come out, apart from what happened at 2012 AFCON, I think no one has ever come out and said I go to training drunk, or I came to training with a woman, or something like that. But people just say I'm a bad boy, I'm a bad boy. But I've never really understood that bad boy thing. So it's just it's something that I actually don't even really, really pay attention to. Mm, okay. <laughs> well, they're, they're saying some of these, uh, you know, they were seeing a lot of potential in you. Like maybe you are going to be the next Kalusha because of your powerful left foot. Like, uh, you know, you were so amazing, your dribbling skills and all that, but you didn't live to people's expectations. Uh, look, um, I never wanted to be like Kalusha Valia. I wanted to be better than Kalusha Valia, you know, and uh, yes, the potential was there. But unfortunately, you know, my, my career took a different turn, especially after 2012. I felt like uh, had the incident that 2012 not happened, I felt like I would have ended up in one of the, the teams in Europe because I did have offers at that time when I was at AFCON 2012. And then unfortunately, after that thing happened, I think a lot of people just, just gave up on me. You know, they just didn't want to deal with me anymore. So that dream of, of, of thing kind of died with that 2012 uh, dismissal, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I kept on going. I kept on going. I, I went back to Bluefontein Celtics. I moved to Super Sport United. And I played for all these other clubs. And, uh, you know, today I, I, um, I find myself at Forest Rangers. And I've just had a, a really good, uh, good season, you know, 
which a lot of people wouldn't have expected from me after so many years, you know. But yes, mm. I I believe I'm my biggest fan. Actually, ah. I'm my biggest fan. You know, I'm one person when I make a mistake, I always admit that I've made a mistake and I try my best to to fix the the mistake and you know, and they say uh, once beaten, twice shy, you know. Unfortunately, there are some of us that want to make a mistake more than five times just to mm. be sure that, <laughs> you know, but yeah, yeah it's, it's life, was, I guess. Was South Africa your favorite destination? Because out of the 13, uh, two are from Zambia. Um, I think I just found a home. Uh, because I remember when I, when I played in Sweden, I, I failed to, to really adapt I don't know whether it was because I was too young or maybe because I didn't like the, the, the football there. I'm not so sure. But uh, I, in South Africa, I just found a home. I, I, I found the football that I agreed with. I found an environment that I was, I was happy with. And Actually, there was even a rumor that you denounced the Zambian citizenship. You got the South African citizenship. I know. Because in 2015, uh, when I was at Ajax Amsterdam, Ajax Cape Town, uh, Coach Wana, Wana Janza uh, actually recalled me to the national team. But unfortunately, it was a friendly game and did not fall under the FIFA calendars. And at that time, Ajax, we had a game uh, over the weekend. So Ajax felt that I wasn't going to be able to travel to Zambia and go and play for them. So they actually turned down the, the, the call-up. So that's where people thought I'd denounce the national team, but that was not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> I would never okay. leave Zambia for anything. <laughs> never. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we come to Forest Strangers, um, which one would you say was your best experience in South Africa? Which team? Did you enjoy playing for in South Africa? Siwelele, Blue Fountain Celtics. Yeah, I think there. Uh, I don't know. I just, I, I just found a bunch of guys that you know we, we we created one big family. You know, we had a very good coach in Clinton Larson there, and it was just it was just amazing. You know, our, our boss uh, Jimmy Augusti was just amazing to all the players, and he really took good care of us. You know, and I was and I was playing some very good football. And it was good to walk in the in the malls and see my pictures on sports shops there. And I, I wanted to be there, you know, and the fans there really loved me and they wanted me to be there. So I felt wanted, you know, and I, and I was also playing some good football. So for me, Bluefontein Celtic was definitely the, the best club that I ever played for. Okay. Yes. All right. So now we are joined by Christina Zulu. Uh, she is the media officer for Forest Strangers. Welcome to Sports Hub. Thank you very much, Modern, and happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you very much, <laughs> lovely boys. <laughs> thank you, I'm so humbled. Yeah. All right, so um, when Clifford was coming to your club, mm -hmm. it was at a time when maybe most clubs were thinking, no, he's gained a lot of weight. He we came can with the board barely. <laughs> <laughs> I was bigger than you. <laughs> really? Yeah, he was big. How did you think, as far as strangers, how did you think of signing him? You know, sometimes um, at, by that time we had Tenant Chilumba and um, I think he had so much hope in him. I think having seen him grow up and having watched him play. So it was one of those situations where um, we knew that he, it, was, it was possible for him to regain his fitness. Mm -hmm. He had started bit by bit. You know, the first time I got on the pitch, I was looking and I'm like, which one's Clifford? <laughs> like, no, it's a player. And, yeah, like, it's that. Coach. <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. I was like, that fat one. And they're like, yes, that very one. And to be honest, to be honest, on a personal level, I was like, I don't think he's going to be able to play. Oh, I, that's what I thought. But the fact that he was there and that they gave him that opportunity, I think it was, it was a time even for himself. I think I remember having conversations with him when he just came. I said, this is an opportunity for you to rewrite your story. So it's up to you with what you do with this opportunity. And those were the only conversations that I would have with him. And so the first season elapsed, and he, I don't really think you played that season, did you? You didn't no, play not, the, no, not a lot of games, no. no. He didn't really. But I did score a goal. One goal? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and five assists. One and five assists. <laughs> One goal and five, five assists. Okay. And fat me. Yeah. So, <laughs> So bit by bit, we got to see, yeah, like, oh, okay, this is the Clifford that people would talk about. So that was, he, he started, you could see him, you could see him changing, you could see him trimming down, and you could see him putting in the work. Although at some point you're looking and you're like, is it going to be possible? Then all of a sudden, reincarnated. This season, you're looking and say, what happened to you? <laughs> but I mean, as much as we didn't see the work sometimes on the pitch, you could see that there was something he was doing that we weren't seeing. Mm. And I think sometimes that's important even for players themselves. 
sometimes do work in the background tell you also kuna ndafe papi je for to that they are in bina na 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 bola apa social media it's not mm. always the case sometimes there's things that you do in the background that people may not be able to see but the only thing they get to see is the results and mm. that's some of the things that we actually saw from him because you see this person he would always joke about eh hey, today i'm kunwa today i'm kwanga but that's not what he's doing you mm. get what i mean he would always be home resting and things like that. and those are only things we got to find out to find out sorry after he was actually given us the results so yeah Well, so last season uh, Clifford had a, had a stellar performance. He did. He was the player of uh, the season for Forest Rangers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the picture, yes. Mm -hmm. And there uh, yes. was also a top goal scorer yes. with 11 goals. Yes. And also scored the best goal of the season. I wish we can see uh, I think that should be the goal. Right? That, was, that yeah. was for Eric. Just I think it's this one. Nope. No, no, no. That's Bonwell's. <laughs> it should be it's the second video actually. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um uh, Clifford very quickly before we wind up, how did you change yourself? How did you regain fitness? How did you believe in it because if it were others they're going to give up? Um I've never had a spirit of giving up myself. So, I always knew what I what I what I needed to do to to get back my fitness, you know? Um because I still had the touches. So it was only an issue of getting fit, you know, and uh, I got a lot of encouragement from, you know, Tenan Chilumba and you know my 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 teammates as well. You know, there's a lot of boys that actually <clears throat> I didn't know that actually look up to me, but they do, you know, they would come to me and they would really, you know, um encourage me they would want to learn from me as well you know and they encouraged me to to, you know, to work with them and and that's the goal of the season <laughs> that Ooh. one wow so <laughs> yeah. very acrobatic huh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> how did you manage to lose the weight <laughs> lots of training lots okay. of training yes lots of training i made sure when i went for for training i i competed you know when you're old and you're competing with 20 year old boys mm. it's not easy you know but because of my competitive nature i wanted to show them a thing or two I you guess know? I have to be under your tutelage. Yeah, you should you should come. Yeah, you should come. Yeah. <laughs> I would even tell them, even in preseason I even told the boys that I would be the top goal scorer of this team. She's she can testify. I did tell all the strikers that I would finish as a top goal scorer in this team this season. Okay. You know, and I wasn't well, saying it for fun because even in training when we're doing shooting practices I want to be the guy scoring all the goals, all the nice goals and <laughs> I take it on the pitch. Okay, so before we go, what's the biggest thing? You are 34 now. What are you looking forward to? When do you wish to retire? Um ah, I'm waiting for the body to tell me. I think the body does speak at some point. It will tell you that dude now is yeah. <laughs> you need to stop find a wife and okay. go set at home. Ah, okay, yeah. nice. Mm. Right, before we go, let's do some boy juggling. <laughs> Christine. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> Don't just talk about football. As you tell us What's for next season? I'm well, going to see Forest winning the league. Well, um coach Ian Bakala has <laughs> promised a uh, two is enough. Okay. Okay, very quickly. Now we know this one is able to juggle. Start. The time starts now. I'm ready about, I'm ready about the cameras. Time <laughs> time starts now. One. <laughs> Guys, two. Okay. Two was a lot. Thank two you two very was much. a lot. This I where we end the program. <laughs> <laughs> That's been an amazing program. Don't My host is uh, Clifford laugh. Mlenga, hmm. who had a stellar performance at Forest Rangers last season, scoring 11 goals. Christine, Z Christina Zulu, actually, he's, she's the media officer for Forest Rangers. Till next week, when I come with another guest, my name is Modern Ntapetela Tsinkala. Goodbye. <laughs>